Well, I'll be the first to admit these boards look a little Frankenstein-y, but they're gonna work just fine. So now that this is all pretty much done, I mean, really all that's left to do here is obviously weld the ring feeders on the end, and then I need to cap these posts, but I mean, that's really it. We're gonna kinda take a break from this for a little while, and I need to build this fence here, and then we'll see. I think probably move the water trough, but let's uh, do the fence first. Mm -hmm. All right, fence is done. I didn't film too much of that because I figure probably most of you guys have seen a fence being built before. I know I've made videos about it before and it's honestly not the most exciting thing in the world. But now that job is done, so I can move on to the water trough. I gotta get the water trough set up in here again. So let's do that. A couple of days ago, I shut the water off to this big one so that they would drink it down and drain it and make it a little bit easier for me to move. I've got them set up with the little trough there, which probably for this number of calves, it's a little small, but um, just for a temporary setup, it's fine. So now I got to dump whatever water is left in this thing out and drag it through the mud to get it back over there on the slab. So the first thing that I need to do now, I guess, is cut out the large pieces of angle iron that I'm gonna anchor to the concrete and then build the cage off of. So the only kind of tricky part here is the cage needs to be removable because I wanna be able to access that uh, pipe, that riser pipe coming out of the ground in case it ever breaks or anything. I wanna make sure that I have plenty of room to get in there and work on it if I ever have to.
Well, it's the next day now, and I think what happened is the camera ran out of both battery and SD storage space. So I know that I didn't get everything filmed here. Let me catch you up to where we're at on the progress with this riser pipe float guard. So this is what I've got so far. And as I was building it yesterday, it did dawn on me that this this is probably way overkill. Uh, but you know what? I would rather have this be too strong than not strong enough because if there's one thing I hate doing, it's fixing broken pipes. So anything that I can do now to avoid that, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. The base of this float guard attaches down here with four 3 8 bolts, which is gonna make it really easy for me to remove in the event that I do have to dig this pipe up again or, or work on this riser in any way. That was very important to me, especially when I poured the slab here because I did not want to hinder my ability to dig this pipe up if I have to. This guard on the front that goes over the float looks really good on the top. I think that's gonna work just fine, but there is a pretty big gap in between the water level and this level on the float guard itself. So I'm not sure if somebody would wanna get a nose in there. I know a lot of times, they will kind of reach their heads in there to try to drink that water right as it comes out of the float because I, th I think the water is cooler and they like that. That's all well and good until they bump the, the float with their nose and end up breaking something. On the back of the guard here, I've got still a huge open space that I was trying to decide how I wanted to fill this in. The, the two things that I was thinking was one, either put bars across here the problem with that is that you would need at least three of them and that would this thing is going to really start to get heavy if i ever do have to take it off one day it's going to be a nightmare to try to muscle it around so i think what i'm going to do instead is take a hog panel um you know with a quarter inch wire and i'll cut out a square that's about this size and we'll just weld that to here so this will have like a screen over it rather than uh, pipes going across this hose fitting, ah, it's probably fine, honestly, but I will probably feel better if I go ahead and weld something across, just, just to make sure because the riser is a little bit closer to this side of the guard. So if I weld something across here, that will ensure that nobody gets a nose in there to, to mess with anything. I've got a rough plan of how I wanna do this, so let's get started. The first thing that I need to do is find the straightest part of this panel so that it welds up a lot nicer. And I think it's about right here in the middle. It's a little bit tall, but it's gonna work. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just weld it on how it is and then we can come back with the grinder and the cutoff wheel and trim off any excess. Well, there you have it, one water trough float guard. This thing is not gonna win any beauty contest, but it'll darn sure do what I need it to do. I don't think that strength is gonna be an issue with this float guard. I'm pretty happy with the way all that turned out. The one thing that I don't like about this, I'm not crazy about, is on these three tubes that kind of come down over the top of the float, we have these exposed holes there. And I don't like that. I don't like the way it looks for one, um, it it kind of gives it an unfinished look that I'm not crazy about, but more than that, it might create a nice place for a wasp to make a nest and, you know, cause their water source would be right there. 
Uh, so yeah, that's not ideal. If that becomes an issue, I may have to cap that or put some foam in there or something to keep those little critters out of there. But other than that, I think this thing's pretty nice. Now that this is done, the only thing, well, two things left. We need to get these round bale feeder rings attached to the new bunk feeder here. And then I need to clean up all the stuff in here. Everything, tools, tables, drop pieces of metal, tractors, <laughs> all this stuff has got to go. Regular viewers might remember that I intentionally put this ring feeder right here so that when it was time to move these individual sections over to the new manger, it would be somewhat convenient. So all I have to do is take one of these panels down and then I can drag these pieces through one at a time but they are heavy. I remember assembling this thing. The pieces are very heavy and it's not going to be fun trudging through this mud trying to carry one, but we got to do it. And the timing couldn't be better because I don't know if you can see in the middle of the feeder there, there's a little pile of hay that I think these guys are kind of having a tough time reaching. So once I get one of these feeder sections out of here, they'll be able to get in and get at that. So that'll be good. They'll appreciate that, I think. Well, I've been staring at this for a minute, and one thing I realized, I don't know why this didn't dawn on me before, but there's no way I'm gonna get these pins in here because they're gonna hit the roof. So that's one thing. I could cut these off to make them work, but then I would have to put like lock pins in the bottom, and that, that would work, but the more I'm looking at it, the more I'm thinking it might just be easier and it might just be better to cut these loops off and then just weld the square frame directly to my pipe frame here. The reason that I was trying to keep these pins in place was just in the event that I might want to take this off one day um, to like get a box scraper in here or something. I don't really know why I would actually ever need to do that. And the more I sit here and look at it and think about it, the more I just can't think of a reason why I would ever need to do that. So I'm kind of thinking that the thing to do is to cut these loops off and weld these right into the pipe it'll be stronger that way um, but it will never come off whether that's good or bad i don't know but i think that's the route i'm gonna go so yeah let's do that thought I would say it but I think we might be done. I ended up using these short pieces of angle iron to attach the curved feeder to the straight parts and the angle iron definitely works fine it does the job but really flat bar probably would have been better here. I just at this time in my shop I don't have any uh, thick flat bar that's wide enough to do this and you know going to the steel yard wasn't really an option today so uh, I used the angle iron because that's what I had. What I don't really like about it is that it creates this point here. And down here where the calves might encounter it, I tried to grind it off, you know, so it's not as sharp. So if somebody does bump into it, eh, they're gonna feel it, but I don't think it's gonna bruise or uh, certainly won't puncture the skin with that point ground down. I've now got 24 
spots for calves to stick their heads in which is better than the 18 spots they had with just the ring feeder. I'm really happy with the way this turned out and I like the concept of this design. I actually didn't think of this myself. Evan from Country View Acres emailed me a picture of a feeder a lot like this when I was talking about building these and I like the design so much that I incorporated it here in my own setup. I know a lot of you guys probably watch Country View Acres already, but if you haven't seen it, go check it out. I got this ring feeder from Lakeland Farm and Ranch Direct back, man, I don't even remember. This was a while ago. I wanna say it was at the beginning of the summer. And it's finally, I've been able to use it the way that I've wanted to. Obviously, you guys have seen me use the Lakeland feeder out here in the little field and just dump a bale in it. But the whole reason that I wanted to get my hands on one of these in the first place was to set it up like this. I'm gonna leave a link to Lakeland down in the description. Check them out if you're in the market for any sort of livestock handling equipment. They make good stuff and they ship all over the United States and I'm assuming Canada because it is a Canadian company. Check the description for that link. All right, let's go grab some bales and see if this was all a big waste of time. I can see we've got some in the corner down here that are gonna need a little bit of help. So they're just trying to stick their heads through the fence and that's gonna end badly, I'm afraid. Hey guys, come on now. Get your head out of there. Thank you. You've been in there before. Come on now. Show them. Show them. What? How about that? I think that one of the greatest feelings in the world is seeing an idea come to reality. I'm so happy with how this is working. It is exactly like I hoped it would be. I'm glad that I didn't try to stuff a third feeder in here because you can see how the spacing is. They, the way it is now, they've got enough room to sort of mill around, go back and forth. Um, when they're in the feeders, their butts aren't touching. There's still, I mean, another maybe 10 feet in between them, which is good because we didn't want them. What I was worried about is that they would get too cram packed in there. But that looks just about right. This is different. Oh, looky there. Now you may have noticed all the water on the ground there. There's no issues. I ended up draining that trough again a couple hours ago because I noticed that after welding the cage around the float, the water had kind of like an oily film on the top and then a lot of the welding slag had dropped down in the water. And I have no idea what sort of effect that might have um, on the cattle if they drank that. Probably nothing, but you know, it was, it was just better to be safe. And so that's, that's why all the water is on the ground. There's no leaks, no broken pipes. Uh, it's supposed to be like that for now. 
Oh, almost forgot. I need to give these guys a Redmond block. I've been really happy with the Redmond salt blocks this year, and I plan on doing a full update video on how that went using the garlic blocks for fly control. If that hasn't come out already, that is coming soon. So now the question becomes what to do with this third piece of the round bale feeder. And I've actually got an idea for this thing. It's got to do with using this and then these two fence line bunk feeders, kind of connecting them all together. I'll need a fourth side and then I want to sling an axle underneath that thing and a tongue and then this could be like a portable hay wagon. And I think this would be absolutely perfect for when I have to feed hay over at the winter pasture. Um, this year, having the small square bales, it won't be a big deal, but when I have to feed round bales over there, having something like this that's portable and I could just park it down there for a few days while it you know, has two or three round bales in it, I think that's gonna be the ticket. I just can't stop watching them. I'm just so happy with how this turned out. <laughs> anyway, thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch. I wonder if I could fit one more tool in here.